Welcome once again, anime nerds and other dudettes out there uh, on the internet and at lasertimepodcast.com. Uh, it's a brand new weekend, which means a brand new anime streaming showcase. So we're going to look at one of my more recent uh, favorite series of this decade, and that's uh, Pro Tatsunoko Productions' uh, Ping Pong the Animation. So let's get started, shall we? Tatsunoko Production has a long-running history in the anime industry. They were innovators, and they were likely a nostalgic factor for many older anime viewers in the 80s and the 90s with shows like Macross and Gatchaman. Those shows were essentially the start of the U.S. anime boom in the 80s and 90s due to licensors getting the properties, then repurposing and editing them to appeal to U.S. audiences. The ethics or issues with those are for another time. Tatsunoko, despite a lot of prominence many decades ago, they're certainly a resilient animation studio, still continuously putting out series annually. For me personally, most of their productions are either a mammoth striking hit or a colossal substandard miss. In 2014, Tatsunoko claimed a place in the former category with a director Masaaki Yuasa's Ping Pong the Animation. Adapted from a 1997 manga by Taiyo Matsumoto, Ping Pong tells the interweaving story of several ping pong players from Japan and one who's been kicked off his Chinese team and is transferred to a Japanese school to redeem himself. Makoto slash Smile is the no-nonsense player, while his lifetime rival Yutaka slash Pickle is the carefree but all-around cocky player. Both are a part of the Katase team. Meanwhile, we have Ryuchi slash Dragon is the dominant force that leads the Kaio Academy, and then you have Kong slash China, who is the Sujito Academy transfer student set to redeem himself while playing in Japan before he can return home. It's a rich, diverse cast, with the elders and coaches rounding out the rest to help keep the cocky youngsters in line. Ping Pong truly stands out in its character's approach, development, its growth, and as I often consider it, Ping Pong is an allegorical Game of Thrones. Now, unlike Game of Thrones, Ping Pong has no central protagonist or antagonist, but you will like and hate all of the characters for various reasons. I also understand that Ping Pong will never have the reception that uh, Game of Thrones has, nor will it reach the same level, but I feel it's an apt observation. It's completely arguable if the show's as good as Game of Thrones, though, which goes without saying, and, and that's not what I'm here to dispute. What I'm ultimately appealing is that despite the fact that the characters will not die or will ever be killed forthwith, they will grow and they will learn and they will change your perception of them throughout the entire series, all in a respectful, believable, and intelligent manner. Another arguable caveat of Ping Pong is its splendid animation style. Using the avant-garde, unique, almost rotoscoped look that few series do anymore these days, Ping Pong sets itself apart with rough but fluid style. Players move a little jaggedly, but the animations still come off as believable and help maintain the illusion of a realistic presentation. There are no over-the-top motions or action ever implemented, just real action being transformed into beautiful art. Art director Kevin Amirik and key animation director Shinji Ohira truly helps present Teen Pong in a light that immediately sets itself apart from nearly anything else you'll be watching. The team at Tatsunoko isn't new to the exaggerated realism, as they've done it previously, albeit in much smaller increments. In their 2013 series, Yozakura Quartet Hana Uta, as well as Studio Zex, who also did a very similar, although more heavily rotoscoped style, for their 2013 Aku no Hana adaptation of the manga of the same name. Now, I'm a fan of both of these series, but it's a very special style. It's a style that benefits from the less is more motto, but of course, none of this praise of the animation matters if the story and the plot are lackluster and are not worth stomaching. Luckily, Ping Pong is one of the best slice of life slash sports anime I've ever seen, but it's confession time. I have only seen a handful of sport anime or slice of life anime, but the ones I prefer are more along the lines of Ping Pong than any other severely exaggerated iterations out there. Series like Giant Killing and the previously reviewed Haikyuu tend to be more the speed of ping pong than anything else. Meticulous, well-approached matches, and a, a vital attention is paid to, just like in ping pong. Most of the matches aren't straightforward as you would imagine, however. The matches are more internal conversations, monologues, and soliloquies than outright shown. The actual battle playing out is only a modicum of the true mental test showcased. It's a refreshing alternative then to simply show the sport being played. And the acting is believable and tolerable, so bonus! There is a hubris in most of the players that they all deem themselves the best. Uh, Ping Pong will carefully accentuate each character's strengths and weaknesses over the 11 episode experience. 
the majority of this first set of episodes is focused on Smile, who's arguably the best player in the series, but his biggest obstacle is himself because he's so apathetic to his own talents and the future that he oftentimes is only his obstacle from succeeding. He's willing to sacrifice a win in order to appease his opponent and their wishes. Smile's personality may seem a bit cliched and obnoxious, but in the context of ping pong storytelling, it works and it's well understood. Pico is almost the polar opposite of Smile. He's outright obnoxious and he touts himself as the best and his series of episodes so that his touting isn't what's going to win him games. He needs to actually improve himself as a character and as a person. And Dragon and Kong definitely have their received character development too. It's actually quite ingenious how the tales sort of interweave and are told at the same time without being overbearing or shoved down our throat, sort of like a Tarantino picture. Ping Pong has some of the best pacing I've ever seen. Uh, there's rarely a dull moment throughout the entire series, and it's always moving to its climax. Obviously, if the review wasn't enough, Ping Pong the Animation is is one of my favorite series uh, ever. Uh, it just it, it has a, a, a great story, uh, great characters. It, there's 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 not a single moment where I wasn't hooked and and was distracted to to watch something else or to look at something else while while watching Ping Pong. I'm, I was always focused on screen at, at what was happening. And, and there's something special about the animation style. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with rotoscoping, quickly Google it. Uh, you'll see that it was something that a lot of Disney animators used. It's essentially, it's tracing over real life to animate a more fluid, uh, almost liquid-esque style, making it look a little bit more realistic. It's, it's an interesting subject uh, and it's super expensive. So it's, that's, it's usually why it's very rare to see most, most days. Masaaki Yuasa is, is one of my favorite directors that I need to spend more time with a lot of his works. He, he just has this... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. He has this view and he has this direction and this ability to, to tell a story and, and, and to create this world that is always entrancing. Kaiba is another one of the shows that he's worked on. It's one of those completely slipped under the radar. It came out, people said, oh, okay, that exists, and almost forgot about it. It's, it's coming up on being 10 years old. If you can find it, I would absolutely recommend it. It's a, it's a thrill ride. It is probably unlike something you've never seen. It's, it's got that unique uh, Yuasa style. It's got that unique uh, art palette and art style to it. It's, it's tremendous. It's a terrific show. But... Uh, Ping Pong, seriously, I spend a weekend with it. It's it's 11 episodes, so it's not a huge time investment. Uh, and it's it's so good. It, even if you don't like sports, uh, if, if you just sort of like characters, if you like character-driven stuff, you like character-driven dramas and, and, and semi-comedies, slice-of-life stuff, Ping Pong is a terrific show, and, and I, th I think it'll be a, a, a great show to spend a, spend a weekend with. Uh, I, I cannot recommend it enough. It's just top tier for me. It's it's always up at the top. So that's it. Uh, that's this week's episode of Anime Streaming Showcase. As always, thank you so much for joining. Uh, leave comments and, and, and likes and, and and all that stuff. You know the drill. You've seen enough YouTube videos. You've seen the internet at this point. You know what we're asking for. Check out Laser Time Podcast. That's where the text-based composite of this is uh, you can leave a comment there but I again I will always thank them they are incredible for allowing me the outlet to produce this stuff that comes out of my brain and out of my dumbass mouth to to share with you you dummies out there and I say that in such a loving way uh, <laughs> I'm gonna wrap this up because I want to go watch more anime so I can create more stuff like this for you guys so I'm also probably going to hop into some Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, I hope that doesn't date me too bad, because I don't know why I might actually release this. Yeah, we'll see you next time on Anime Streaming Showcase.